This will be a short video on the final assembly process of taking the completed column and base builds and combining them into a finished tower. If you recall from the previous videos, I have already shown both a column and a base that were independently tested to 15 kilograms. Now it is time to see if it's possible to combine them and have the finished tower hold over 15 kilograms to achieve the desired bonus result. Here is my notebook page for the final assembly. You can see that I'm keeping track of which components I used. Here it was base number 3 and column number 12. I am also tracking what the original completed masses were. 4.296 grams for the base and 2.083 grams for the column. Once combined, the final tower weighed 6.395 grams, and as you probably already know from watching the benchmark video, it did hold the entire load of 15.151 kilograms for an actual efficiency of 2,369 and a competition bonus score of 3,127. Here is the completed base and column ready to be connected together. I decided to lightly tape the base to the jig and then just apply glue to the top of the legs and put the column in place. Seems easy enough. Here is a picture of the completed tower and from this view everything looks fine, but let's take a closer look at that interface joint. I really thought I had just ruined hours of work by how these things were glued together and I had serious doubts that it would hold. Specifically, check out how bad those back joints are. The bottom of the column leg has less than half the surface in contact with the top of the base leg. That is really bad, and I thought hard about trying to cut it off and re-gluing it, but then I realized I would probably damage it worse by doing that, so I just decided to add a little extra glue and cross my fingers. Luckily, it did wind up holding the entire 15 kilograms, but perhaps something related to this bad interface joint is why it failed during the second test I showed in the benchmark video. So what would I do differently next time? I would recommend you use both jigs for the final assembly process. Temporarily tape the complete jig together like this. Once that is done, you can put the base in place and then carefully slide the column down the jig and use it to perfectly align the legs. It still might take some experimentation to figure out the best way to apply the glue at those joints, but this process should make sure everything stays aligned. That interface joint really shouldn't need a lot of glue if done correctly, and your tower is level. The vertical load should do the work to keep the tower together, and the glue should only be needed to address the minor lateral loads. In case you didn't see the live testing of the completed device in the benchmark video, I have included it here as well. The loading went smoothly, but I had my fingers crossed the entire time as I really didn't know if I had screwed things up with that interface joint. I was very relieved when I heard the sand empty from the autoloader. This might have been the most stress I've experienced for a test since watching my team compete in an actual event years ago. At least I proved that you can successfully use this technique of building the column and base separately even with a terrible interface joint. Here are the final results showing the completed tower mass of 6.395 grams and holding 15.151 kilograms to achieve a bonus score of 3,127. I hope this series of videos has helped you learn about the process I took going from reading the rules to building a pretty competitive tower. Good luck this season, and I'd love to hear how you and your team does throughout the year. Thanks for watching, and feel free to reach out to me with any specific questions.